morning, everybody. Welcome back to Twisted Life with TV. I am Poetry. You are here for Travel and Talk Tuesday. I am on my way to work, child. Oh, it's a rainy day in Orlando. It actually ain't raining right now, but it says that it's a 100% chance of rain all day, which is going to make my work day long. Because the rain slows me down. Rain relaxes me. I be going to curl up and take a damn nap when it rain. So, yeah, we'll see. See how my day go. Um, so, tomorrow. Tomorrow I go get my toothbrush, y'all. Well, I go get fitted for it. Hopefully I get it the same day. That the place I'm going to is the same place I used to go to in St. Louis, the same organization anyway, um, in which they do same day partials. And I probably could have went sooner if I had took off work, but I didn't feel like taking off work. So I figured I'd just go on my off day, you know, because I got to go twice. If, if they do the same way they did in St. Louis, I go in the morning, get fitted, and then I got to come back in the afternoon to make sure that what they made for me is accurate. That's what I got to do. Which, that helps because, you know, I've been trying to figure out ways to make sure I get my teeth matching my partial and color again. Because, you know, over years, you know, your teeth stain and things like that. And unless you're going to get them whitened professionally, you know, you could tell. However, if I went and got them whitened professionally, then they probably would have been whiter than a damn partial, which would still look crazy. So, hopefully, like I say, I can get it all done tomorrow. Hopefully, it's done right. Hopefully, it's done right. Because one of the things that I had an issue with when I first got my partial, I was 25 right and uh, i told y'all that story if y'all didn't hear it y'all need to go back to my travel and talk tuesdays and, and watch it there but i first got my portion when i was 25 and they fit it it was mm. when i first started using this company let me change that because my first portions wasn't right oh my god they weren't right when i started using this company i think i was probably about 26 27 and when they first fitted it it was kind of perfect well i thought it was and then as the years went on and I kept replacing them, um, they started getting better and better. And I realized that the person wasn't as accurate as could be. But I had this one doctor that gave me horse teeth, y'all. Like, if you look at my tooth, it looked kind of big, but it's not big. It's really not big. <laughs> but he, um, he made me some teeth that looked like, you know, Mr. Ed. I got one damn partial in my mouth. I don't have a full row of dentures. But he made it like I had, I'm, like, why this teeth so big? Like, I stuck a chicklet in my damn mouth, and I'm walking around looking like Bill's Bunny. Like, what the fuck? He gonna tell me that's the way it was supposed to be. No, sir. No, ma'am, Pam. That ain't it. Okay? I don't have partial before at this, up to this point. Like, I know how it was supposed to be, and this ain't it. So I went to another doctor, a black doctor, dentist. And, you know, at the recommendation of friends where Kenny got her root canal, uh, not her root canal, her teeth pulled and everything at. And, yeah, that was a bad experience over, overall as well. I'm like, sometimes you just can't go support our own just because other people tell you to. Because they don't be telling you the truth all the time about the quality of work. And come to find out the person who told me to go see this dentist ain't never used him at all. It happened to be a family member. So, anywho, child, they decided to try to fit me for another one. Theirs was so bad. It had so many wires in it. And I'm like, dude, my partial don't have no wires. I grind my teeth. Wires cut into my gums. I don't have any wires. Right? I have a, uh, well, now I have a tooth missing on this side, too. I have two teeth missing. Um, and they use this. I had this tooth pulled so my partial could be anchored into my mouth without me having the wires. That's why that was pulled. So that way I could just flip it in. Basically a flipper is what, if you know what I'm talking about, it's a flipper. And so, uh, yeah, he had so many doggone wires and kept trying to convince me um, that that was the right thing to do and that's how it was supposed to look. And I'm like, dude, I've been living with this all my damn life. 
Said y'all didn't even notice I had a fake tooth. That's how long, how perfect looking it was. Every once in a while, it would start popping out, and that was my fault because one, I'm not supposed to eat without the partial in my mouth. I've been eating without it in my mouth for the last five days because I had no fucking partial because that it, it changes the structure of the gum line. And actually, I had um, developed the abscess. I can't even say abscess. It, was a, it might have been a pimple. A pimple in my mouth. I'm a gum line. What did I eat? Oh, I ate that steak and shake garlic burger. I love that garlic burger. Y'all know I, it's heavy in oils and shit like that, but I love that fucking garlic burger. I like garlic. Y'all know how it is. And usually when I do, I get a pimple in my mouth because of how much oil and butter is in the burger itself. They add butter to the bread. They add butter to the burger. It's a lot of oil, and then the burger creates its own fat. You know, it's a lot of oil and butter going on in that damn burger. And I got a, a so I got a pimple in my mouth. Oh, um, I got some peroxide wash, you know, and just rinsed my mouth for, uh, twice that day, and it went away. I was fine. Um, but those are the type of things that happens when I don't have the portion in my mouth. Okay, because one, the partial actually helps block food from getting into places they ain't supposed to be. And, you know, it damn sure helps prevent burn. And like I said, if I had ate a hot piece of pizza and I didn't realize how hot it was. What the fuck are y'all doing? I didn't realize how hot it was. Then, you know, that, that partial will help me prevent the burning of my roof and my mouth and stuff like that. Um, I can't eat bubble gum. And I used to love gum. Um, because it sticks to the to partial, so I can't chew bu bubble gum. Um, it limits my hot foods. I love spicy food, but it limits me eating it because the spicy food get caught in between the portion of the roof of my mouth, be burning the fuck out the roof of my mouth. So it limits how much spicy foods I eat. Because I don't want to be dealing with having to keep popping it out and cleaning it after, you know. But still, tomorrow, I go to the dentist to get fitted for the tooth, and I hope. They don't have me walking out her looking like I got a set of teeth on top of teeth. I hope they don't do that because I'm going to be pissed off. Actually, I, I, I already know how I am. I'm not going to walk out of there with that tooth. I've done this before. If I don't like it, you need to fix it again. You need to do it again. I'm paying my money. You need to do it again. I'm not going to be satisfied with mediocrity. This shit is five hundred dollars. Okay, so that's gonna happen tomorrow. Like I say, hopefully they get it done in the morning, get the fitting and everything done, and then by the afternoon they call me back and say, "Hey, it's ready." Now come pick it up, because any other time of the week I won't be able to go pick it up because it's doing my work work time. They close at four thirty. I don't get off until after four thirty, so I gotta get it tomorrow. Hopefully everything goes smoothly. If not, then I won't have it to next Wednesday, child. It'll be a whole nother week without a toothpaste in my mouth. Um, but, yeah. So, there's that. Um, we got visitors coming in this week. Um, my daughter's friends are coming in from my town. I want to say one from Atlanta and one from Minnesota. I don't know where the girl's coming from, but they coming in our town to help her celebrate her birthday it was last week but she still celebrated she celebrated all month so they come in and help her celebrate her birthday um so luckily we don't have any power to review this week um i'm gonna i'm gonna do berlin when i do berlin it did it, it, the first episode didn't make me excited to see it it's the all the episodes are posted so if you want to binge watch it they all posted up on netflix right now um but yeah, that's where I'm going. So, I got good news from my doctor. Um, I went in and did my lab work uh, two days after Christmas, the 27th. And the doctor called me with my results. And things are looking good. I have already improved 
all of my lab results by 15 to 20 percent. Which, remember I was telling y'all that I wasn't a diabetic, but my A1C was high as fuck when I went to the ER. And then y'all convinced yourselves that I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, so we did the A1C test. I'm sick of these motherfuckers here. I am sick of these slow bitches here. When they do the A1C test, right? The A1C test, your blood cells, and they give you a, a average of a three-month time frame. This, I found out that the blood cells that they test, when they do the A1C test, they have a lifespan of three months, which is how they're able to give you a three-month average, right? So, when I, when I went to the ER that day, it was like at 11, which is high as fuck, my A1C. Um, and then when I tested it again in December, it was like eight something. And then she told me that it was probably lower than that, but there's other factors uh, uh, um, that they have to weigh in that will make that number higher, give a higher reading than normal. So it's probably lower than that. So I'm probably still free, 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 the risk of pre-diabetes. I, I, I've always been at a risk as far as I can remember because um, it's, it, it's in my family. My bloodline, my grandparent, great-grandmother, my uncle, it's, it's in my bloodline. So I've always knew I was at risk. Um, but being that I took that test just three weeks after me being in the ER, you would think that my average would not have dropped that much. If my average was already at 11 on the 4th or the 2nd, when they, I went to the hospital on the 2nd, and then, ah, my heart, oh. Um, and then on the 27th, there's 20... 19 days later? 19 days later? Is that under? Is 8 or lower? Anywho, child. I'm doing a bad, lot better. Um, matter of fact, she told me everything was significantly improved with the exception of I'm still anemic. Um, which basically is still because of the, you know, the, the bleeding. Um, I had a break, y'all. Yeah, I had like a 30, almost a three-week break. And I'm, I, hopefully I'm on a regular cycle right now. I don't know, child. Um, I need to be in the other lane. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. I do. Um, and my vitamin D is hella low. Which is crazy, right? Because like, most people get their vitamin D from the sun. And you would think that being in Florida that you get a whole lot of vitamin D in your system. But the sun is so fucking hot here, most people could cover up. And she said the average Floridian has a vitamin D deficiency because of that reason. Because of how hot the sun is here. That it, 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 it's not good for your skin. So people cover up or they put sun blockers on or whatever to prevent the you know, the sun rays and UV rays and all the other stuff from coming in and penetrating that we are creating a vitamin D deficiency within ourselves. And then, you know, me, I got the poly light eruptus, whatever. I can never remember what this fucking term is called. What are y'all doing? Son of a bitch. I forgot what my leg condition. PMLE or PLME. One of them two. Because of that, you know, I, I supposed to stay covered up as much as possible during the summer months, so my vitamin D is gonna always be low. So she's telling me I probably gonna have to take vitamin D supplements for the rest of my life. But I already had a plan for this before it got cold. I was gonna go outside in my backyard and uh, bask in the sun for ten minutes a day. That's all you need, really, is ten minutes a day. And I wasn't gonna do it at the highest point of the day. I was going to do it just enough when the sun is out, but not like beaming, beaming. Ten minutes a day, throw on my swimsuit, and sit out there and just chill. Just chill. She was all in my asses. All in my asses. 
So that is my goal. Um, I don't want to be taking shit for the rest of my life. Uh, the way that, like, I have a primary doctor, but I haven't been dealing with the primary doctor, y'all. Who I've been dealing with actually has been a, a pharmacy doctor. After I went up there and went off over them, you know, uh, did I go off on them this time? I talked real stern. I didn't really go off. I just talked real stern to them. The last go round. And uh, my primary doctor didn't call me back at all. I ended up with the pharmacy doctor calling me, and she has been the one that's been like on the ball. Like when I talk to her, we actually have like almost one to two hour conversations. And she'd be apologizing for talk so much. And I'll be thanking her for talk so much because I want to know. I'm only one person. Like, I want you to break it down to me like I'm a five-year-old. Explain it to me in terms that I can understand. And let's get on the same page as far as my health is concerned. Well, her plan, she's the one that told me to hell on on the Ozempic. Ain't no point in me taking that shit. She know I, how much weight that I want to lose. And I don't need to take that type of... Um, Regimen in order for me to achieve that. Um, because I've already started back my walking and everything. Blood pressure is looking good. Um, still could be better, but looking good. Um, uh, stress levels are lowered, you know. A1C is already improving. Um, yeah, so she like within about three months, she expects all the medications that they have prescribed me for me to be off of. With the, with the plan that we set forth between, you know, her expertise and my desires. She expects, as long as I stick to them, three months, that, that I'm, I'll be able to cut back or cut be off all this medication. Amen. Amen. Okay. That's, that. I mean, that was just music to my fucking nerves. Muse to my ears, y'all. So, one of the things that I'm going to do to try to help me and myself is my bread. Y'all know I, I like bread as much as I love potatoes. And I don't have any dietary restrictions. That was the one thing that got me to it. Like, um, when, when, when people get diagnosed with, let's say, diabetes or high blood pressure or whatever they like to tell you everything that you can't eat or you need to cut back on remember they come on the, the doctor kept on telling me i need to cut back on my sodium and i'm like i don't add sodium to my food but i know and then they're like well you know processed foods has a lot of sodium i know i do eat some processed food i'm tell you that i do eat some part because i eat potato chips um but i don't eat it in the way that they're thinking they thinking that's my whole diet, my whole consumption of everything. So I went to the nutritionist and I sat down with the nutritionist and we talked, went over the foods that I eat. I have no dietary restrictions. That was another thing that made me say, well, damn it, do I really? Am I as bad off as I'm thinking? <laughs> and like you say, just, if I just keep on keeping on what I'm doing, do my portion control, because that I have a problem with my portion control do my push control, I'm going to be alright. Alright? I'm going to be alright, child. Um, I haven't had any palpitations since I left the hospital. However, I am taking that heart medicine. That is the one thing I am taking, is the heart medicine. And I realize that I don't take it, it, my heart does speed up. So, there's one thing I had to cut out my diet altogether, though. Which is, I struggle with this yearly for some reason. Um, soda. I will cut out soda for like months at a time. And then all of a sudden I'll get a craving for a pineapple Fanta or a peach something. And I'll drink a soda. And then I'm on the kick again. And it'll be about three, four months before I realize, bitch, you drink a soda again. I don't drink soda with caffeine. Um, so like a Sprite. A Sprite strong as hell. It's high in carbonation. Um, but then I drink like fruity soda, like the pineapple soda, peach soda. But I drink brands that are caffeine free. So it's not caffeine, it's pretty big. But the carbonation in the soda affects my heart rate. Like, if you ever drunk a Fanta, 
or is it Crush? One of them two is crack. I'm telling you, one of them two is crack. The Sprite from McDonald's, that shit is crack. Have you ever do, do this one day? Go into like a Walgreens or something like that. Take your blood pressure. Or actually, you know what? Do your pulse count before you eat or drink a Sprite soda from McDonald's. McDonald's Sprite is different, child. And then at, drink a Sprite from McDonald's. And then do a pulse check when you do. See how your heart gonna be beating fast in the motherfucker. I don't know what it is in the carbonation, but it's speed at least the one in, in in that one in the sprite in the McDonald's version. I don't know what the fuck it does, but it speeds my heart the fuck up. I had that sparkling grape juice for New Year's. It has carbonation in it. I didn't get the rapid heart beating like that, but I had I had a I, yesterday um, had to stop at Seven Eleven to get lunch. And they gave me a free Fanta soda, a free pineapple soda. Oh, I wanted that damn soda so bad. I wanted that soda so bad. But the willpower in me came back to, I, I didn't do it. I covered it up. <laughs> I covered it up completely so I couldn't even look at it. and forgot it was there. I put my water bottles on top of it so I didn't know it was there. And then when I got back to the office, I was like, ooh, my mouth watered. Boy, like a crackhead. My mouth watered. That shit be calling me. I'm telling you, it's cracking that shit. It is Coca Cola. Coca Cola used to put crack or Coke in their food. That's what I, that was the rumor. Anywho, I um, got back to the office though, and it was maybe like three or four people in the office, and luckily somebody wanted it. I was like, her, take this. And I was like, do you drink it? My um, boss was like, I gave it up for Lent. I'm like, it ain't Lent yet. And he said he start Lent on the first day of the year. I ain't mad at him. Me and him together, we both on this no soda kick. Um, yeah. Water, juice. That's my thing. Water, juice is my thing. Me and my daughter, oh, we went out for her birthday. Um, it's a, it's a little Japanese hibachi place, uh, Gayu Ku or something like that. I can't never pronounce it right because I don't know what the extra signs say. Um, we went there. We love to go there where, you know, did the little hibachi grill. And... They gave her this matcha green tea tiramisu cake for her birthday. Baby, that was like the best dessert ever. She didn't like it much. <laughs> My daughter didn't like it much. But they gave it with vanilla bean ice cream. I didn't like the vanilla bean ice cream that much. And I like vanilla bean ice cream. So I ate her tiramisu matcha green. Either I'm going to have to learn how to make it or I'm going to have to invest into that company. It was so doggone good. And then today, I was up this morning. Um, oh, I was cooking breakfast. Making bre Me and one of my coworkers, I was making us breakfast. Um, just basically my little breakfast sandwiches. Oh, they wrapped up. You can't see them. My little, little breakfast sandwiches with me and her. Um, and the YouTube was automatically just playing this video. Of course, you know, one of them infomercials trying to sell you shit. That's basically what it was. But it was about the green tea matcha. Now, I know the benefits of green tea um, for skin care. And I know people that say they drink, you know, they drink green tea daily and then it helps their skin. So, I know the benefits of green tea for skin care. But I didn't realize the green tea benefits for gut health. And that's what basically green tea matcha is. Um, but the whole the commercial was about green tea extract, e extract and how it helps benefit your gut health and everything like that. And I was like, the dessert itself wasn't sweet. I mean, it was sweet, but it wasn't like rich sweet. You can clearly tell there wasn't no corn syrup in that shit, right? I was like, I need to really start incorporating green tea matcha into my diet some kind of way. I heard bad things about matcha's taste. I like the way that that tasted. My daughter said she didn't like that much. It tastes like she did she tell me it tastes like chalk? No. What she tell me it tastes like medicine? Did she tell me it tastes like Robitussin? I don't remember what she told me, but it was like it was like it wasn't something that you're supposed to be eating. <laughs> it, it was I mean it was but it didn't taste bad to me and I'm like I don't wanna like mm. so I need to start learning how to incorporate green tea matcha into my diet. I don't think I could drink it. 
because I'm a visually drinking and that's is green tea but like if you make it into like a smoothie or something like that I can't stand to look at it and I wouldn't stomach it so yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna have to do some further research into whether just regular green tea is as effective as, as, as the green tea extract which is basically what matcha is we gonna see and I'm gonna see how that helps the sister out as far as my good health you know it helped me along my little weight loss journey trying to hit the 50 I'm still trying to take off them same 50 pounds I was taking not taking off last year before I turned 50 and then they, they didn't go nowhere they didn't go nowhere they didn't go nowhere so we're gonna see how to, but I'm gonna start trying to that and I'm trying to start baking my own bread I've always said I'm not a good baker and but I know that the breads because that's what I was talking about the bread the breads are high in corn syrup high in preservatives um it's best to buy fresh bread from a bakery but once you slice fresh baked bread lasts longer unsliced right once you start slicing it to it, you need to start eating it. So I was um I think it's a bakery near me. So I might start buying the fresh break bread for the break. I go to like Publix and try to get their fresh break bread, but I tried to go get some pumpernickel bread the other day. And they know what the fuck I was talking about. And it, it um well no that wasn't it. When well, I did pump I went to Publix too. But I went to another bakery. They didn't know what the fuck pumpernickel bread was. It's basically rye bread. This it is just, but um, it has a sweetness to it. So <laughs> I might have to try to find another bakery. See if I give you some like half loaves or something in that way. Cause I don't eat bread every day. Like today, these sandwiches on ciabatta bread. Anywho, let me get to work. I'm here, child. This has been traveling talk Tuesday. I will see y'all in the next video. Hopefully, I will have a tooth in my mouth when I do. Peace.